Hi, I'm Mrs McTaggart and I'm going to take you through the solutions for this practice paper. This is paper D, paper 1. So our first question is nice, straightforward, find the gradient of this line. So your gradient formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 minus y1 is 3 minus minus 7 all over minus 5 minus 3. So you'll see that double negative there turns into a plus. So you've got 10 over negative 8. Simplify that down. So your gradient is 5 over 4. The negative can either stay in the bottom or you can put it in the front or you can bring it to the top. Either way, it's negative 5 over 4 for your gradient. Question 2 is your fraction question. Remember, of stands for times. So it's really a board mass question. So we have to do this part first. Now to multiply you have to make that three and a half top heavy so our first sum is two fifths times uh, three and a half is the same as seven over two because you do two times three is six plus the one. So there is your first fraction. That gives you 14 over 10 or the twos will cancel which gives you seven over five. Okay so they just both became one. So you've got seven over five or 14 over 10 which would have become seven over five anyway. So then you have 7 over 5 plus 4 over 5 for your second sum. And it's really nice that they're actually both got a common denominator already. So you just add them together and it gives you 11 over 5. Now that one I feel was actually a bit simpler than normal. Question 3 wants the equation of the line. So you have to pick two coordinates. We can choose from a variety of points. And I'm going to circle all the ones you could possibly use. So we could use any of these. And we will always get the same gradient. I'm going to use the y-intercept one, which is 0, 1. And I'm just going to go along and pick another one. I'm going to use 2, 5. So along 2, up 5. So I am using these two. So my gradient, uh, subtract the y. So it'd be 5 minus 1 over 2 minus 0, which is 4 over 2, which is just 2. So I've got my gradient. Now I know my c value. I know my y-intercept is at 0, 1. So my c is 1. So from there, I can go straight to y equals mx plus c. Substitute in my gradient is 2, so I've got 2x plus 1. Alternatively, if you prefer this formula, we could do that. Let's make, let's use the 2 and the 5. So I'm going to make that my a and my b. I'll have y minus 5 is 2 for my gradient, x minus 2, just to show you, it gives you the same answer. So that gives you 2x minus 4, bring the 5 over, minus 4 add 5 is 1. So either way your equation is 2x plus 1. It would have been easier to use my 0, 1 coordinate there, but just to prove it works both ways. Okay, question 4. Um, I've kind of changed the question here because I asked you to draw a box plot. Drawing box plots is not part of the National 5 course. However, they could ask you to find the semi-interquartile range or quartiles. Um, technically, you need the quartiles to get the box plot anyway, so I may as well do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go write these numbers out in order. So there are the numbers out in order. I've obviously got 12 numbers. Split that in the middle. I'm going to have 6 either side. So there is my middle, which is my Q2. Split them down the middle. There is my Q1 and there is my Q3. So I'm just going to write down that Q1 is 8, Q2 is between 10 and 14 would be 12, and Q3 is 21. So that it's nice to have them all clearly written somewhere. If I want the semi-interquartile range, well, quartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Semi means you half it, so that's your formula. So we're going to do highest take away lowest, so 21 take away 8 all over 2. 21 take away 8 is... Um, Oh my goodness, that is 13. So 13 over 2 gives you 6.5. So yeah, drawing box plots, not national 5 anymore, but semi quartile range and quartiles is. So I've changed that with you on. Question 5, we have a jar of coffee with 12.5% extra free in it, which weighs 450. We have to find the original jar. So at some point, our original jar was 100% and they added in 12.5%. And they got that equal to 450 grams. So 100 plus 12.5 is 112.5% is equivalent to 450 grams. 
This is not just a case of find 12.5% and take it away. That is not natural five, so please don't ever do that. This is the one we've got to do it in a ratio or proportion kind of method. So you need to go to get 1%. So we're going to do 450. I've run out of room. So we're going to do 450 divided by 112.5. Now this is not calculator, but I'm kind of thinking we can count up. I know that 112.5 doubled... Two of them is 225. And if you double that again, you get 450. So four 112.5s make 450. So if I'm dividing that, just gives me four. And then times that by 100, which gives me 400 grams. Now that sounds about right. If I wanted to find 12.5%, that's just um, an eighth. It's just half of 25%. And an eighth of 400 is 50 grams. And that is what's been added on. So the original weight was 400 grams. And you can always check your answer with these. That was just a bit tricky. So remember, if you don't think the numbers divide nicely, try counting up. And I'm, I guarantee you'll probably get there. Question six is your alternative vector journey. So we have to get from um, R to P using only the F, Gs and H. So R to P, let's have a look. So I'm going to go, um, my route to R to P is going to go that way, that way, that way. Okay, so that's the route I'm going to follow. So the first part of my journey from R to S is the same as this one here, but I'm going the opposite, oops. I'm going the opposite direction. So the first part of my journey is negative G. This part of my journey is going the opposite direction to F again. So negative F. And then I'm following H. So it's just plus H. Now you can have the three of them in any old order. Okay. So you could have had H minus G minus F. Or you could have had minus F plus H minus g, as long as there's a negative with the f and the g, any combination of those three, with the h being positive, depending on what path you followed, depends, um, would dictate your order. Question seven is a quadratic question, so we've got this logo of three quadratics, so I'm just going to move that out the road, and move it up a wee bit. So this is your, your diagram, first thing we have to do is find the coordinates of p. Now, the coordinates of P come from this. So the coordinate of P plus 2 means it's going to negative 2. So this bit here is negative 2. So that is negative 2. Minus 16 means it's gone down 16. So that is the coordinates of P. It then tells us that R is at 2, 0. So we have to find the coordinate of Q. So this is cut down by a thing called stepping out. So if P is at minus 2... R is at 2. Now, from minus 2 to 2 is like half a quadratic. And I'm jumping up 4. So to get to Q, I'm going to jump up another 4. So the point for Q would be 6. Does that make sense? So minus 2 plus 4 is 2, which takes me to there. Plus 4 is 6. So Q is along 6, and it's down the same as P, so it's down 16. It then says find the equation of the parabola with turning point S. So I need to get the turning point of S first of all. So using this same method, if this is 2, 6, plus 4, that would give me 10, plus 4 would give me 14. So every half of the quadratic, I am jumping along 4. So S is along 14, down 16. So when I put that into the equation, I've got y equals x. Positive 14 goes in as negative 14. And then it's down 16. So there's your equation for s. So actually no working for that one. It's all using a thing called stepping out or um, knowing that these are symmetrical shapes. Question 8 is your algebraic fractions. I'm going to do smile and kiss for this one. So doing the kiss part makes your denominator m bracket m plus 1. The kiss part gives you 3 times your bracket plus 4m. Then I'm going to multiply out that top line. So I've got 3m plus 3 plus 4m all over m bracket m plus 1. I never multiply at the bottom line. I don't see why we should. If you make a mistake, I don't want you to lose marks for multiplying out brackets wrongly. Tidy that up, you have 7m plus 3 
all over m bracket m plus 1. That's that one done. Uh, question 9, we have a graph y equals a cos bx. a is your amplitude, so it goes from 4 to minus 4, so a is 4. b is the number of waves between 0 and 360. Now your graph finishes at 120, your normal cos graph finishes at 360. The con connection there is that 3 times 120 is 360, so there would be 3 waves if I was to draw this out. So b equals 3. Alternatively, you could just write the equation and get the full marks that way. I was writing it as like that as well. Either or would get you the marks. Question 10 is an indice. So the first part takes in knowing the rule that um, a to the power of 0 is just 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So the first bit is just 1. doesn't matter if it's x to the 0, 9 to the 0, um, pqr, all to the power of 0. It gives you 1, okay? The second bit uses your, your other rule. If you have a negative power, you can write that as 1 over a and make your power positive. So remember, the 3 is a bit like your letter here. So that's 1 plus 1 over, let's take it to the bottom, and write it the positive power. So you've really just got one plus one third. So you can either write it as one and one third, or you can write that as four thirds. Question 11 is your thirds. Now, this is a clue because it is a root three already. It tells you it's going to be a root three in the others. 12 can be written as four times three. So root four, root three. 27 is nine times three. So root nine, root three. Square root of 4 is 2, so we've got 2 root 3. Add 5 root 3. Square root of 9 is 3, so 3 root 3. And then they're all in terms of root 3 now, so you just simply do 2 add 5 minus 3. So you're just adding up the, the numbers at the front. 2 add 5 take away 3 is 4, so you've got 4 root 3. I would never ever go straight to my second line there, always write it out as the broken up thirds first of all before simplifying. Otherwise, people make mistakes and would say that that first one is 4 root 3 instead of 2 root 3. Question 12 is talking about circumference and area of a circle. So before I start, circumference of a circle is c equals pi d. There is a lovely song on YouTube if you type in um, circumference of a circle song and it's a man singing and it will never leave your brain once you hear it. So circumference is pi times diameter but area is pi r squared. If you're struggling to remember those formulas, I always tell to my pupils, well, area, you write um, square centimetres at the end, you write cm squared, so it's the one with the squared in it, because most folks remember the formulas, they just don't know which is which. Right, it tells us a piece of gold wire is 10 centimetres long and they make it into a circle. So that means our circumference is 10 it tells us that the circumference is equal to the length of the wire. Yeah, we know that. I've just said that. It says show that the area of the circle is exactly 25 over pi. So if I know my circumference is 10, that means that pi d equals 10. So my diameter is pi, sorry, divide by pi is 10 over pi. Now, if my diameter is 10 over pi, my radius is half of that. Half of 10 is 5, so my radius is 5 over pi. Okay, so area pi is pi r squared. So we have pi times 5 over pi. Now, instead of writing pi, uh, doing that squared, I'm just going to write it twice. I think it's a bit more easier to see it that way. So on the top, you've got 5 times 5 times pi. If you put, put in a 1 if you need to. So you've got a 25 pi. On the bottom, you've just got pi squared. You can cancel the pi and the pi squared leaving you with 25 over pi, which is what they wanted you to get. Question 13 is a straight line question that really threw people the year it came in. We've basically, it says two variables x and y are connected by relationship y equals ax plus b. To me, that jumps out as y equals mx plus c, the equation of a straight line. It tells us to sketch a possible graph where a and b are both less than zero. So A, they've got in place the gradient. So we want to sketch a line with a negative gradient. And it says that B is less than zero, so it means it's also going to have a negative Y-intercept because B is your C value, really. 
So it means your y-intercept is negative again. So a negative gradient is a downward sloping line. So literally all they need to see here in your picture is a coordinate diagram. Oh, let me just rub out that line there and move that up a bit. So what they need to see is, yeah, um, like your straight line axis, x and y. You need to see a downward sloping line that's got a negative y-intercept. So that's why I had to rub my line out a wee bit. So what they are after is something like this. A downward sloping line where your y-intercept is negative and all you would do is mark on there that that was b because we don't know what the number was. And that's what they were after for that one. And that's me done. Thank you very much. I hope that's helped.